Hello and welcome again, viewers and listeners uh, here with uh, Prosper with Sonia Clark and joining me again today for the number four part of a four part series is Donna Pemberton. Welcome, Donna. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. I know, it's all nearly over. I know, I know. Oh gosh, four <laughs> parts of a four part series and I just realised that I got tongue twisted around your surname, Pemberton people. Pemberton, so yeah. make sure I put my my teeth back in. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm all right. right. We've obviously That's been right. doing a lot of talking and I've been we doing have. enough talking. So definitely it's your turn today to be doing some talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're, um, we're on the subject today of uh, mindset and health, uh, which is definitely something that is um, a good strong forte of Donna's. So Donna is mindset coach, hypnotherapist, NLP practitioner, speaker and author and has an upcoming uh, course of eight weeks worth of webinars the power of money and the empowerment principle so we've talked on the the each of the uh, four parts of these interviews the first part was ordering your business the second part was what not to do in your business the third part was around finance uh, as well as um, you know including things like uh, superannuation tax um mortgage which we got really we thought we'd wouldn't be able to talk that much about but we did or well, certainly we um, did, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a you know huge background in that and certainly the way that you've evolved Donna is that to really get into the whole mindset thing and this is this fourth part to me is um you know brings everything together nicely it's a very holistic way to then really empower people to do really well with their um their businesses and because we're all changing so mindset is just so prevalent in you know helping us to leverage as much as possible so absolutely. take it away donna <laughs> thank you thank you well you're absolutely right you know and uh mindset plays a massive part on whether you and i think most people probably get that you know your mindset with your business is going to make the difference between achieving and not achieving if you're going to go into a new project even with your existing business, um, if you're going there with a negative mindset about it, you may as well write it off before you start yeah. because you, you're going to just ruin it for yourself. So you, you have to go into that expectation that it's going to work. And yes, you might need to shift the goalposts and yes, you might need to adjust a few things along the way, but it's those first few steps that are going to get anything going. It's like driving a car. You can only see so far in front of you, but you know the destination is how many kilometres down the road. Mm. So... Yeah, it's all it's all about mindset. Really is all about mindset, everything. We yep. suffer as humans from the mind. Yes. Because we do not have to suffer. Everything comes back to the mind. Mm. So, so true, so true. I think that's a really good analogy that you use too um, with the, the car. You know, we don't always, we can't always see that destination, but we know the destination. And, you know, and it often makes me think too, when driving, because uh, my 18 year old, he's uh, nearly fully licensed. So there's a lot of driving things that we're talking about of late. And it's just always fascinated me how one white line on the road can keep us from stopping to smashing into another oncoming car. So yes, just, look how much power a red light has. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a really good analogy to think about that with, with business and, um, you know how to achieve so let's ask you lots of tips and tricks in and around all that <laughs> well here's mindset actually listen to you you know your um, son's learning to drive at the moment so is he driving a manual or automatic automatic okay so he's in here sedan or a wagon it's um well it's a hatch okay now would you think to put him into a four-wheel drive towing a trailer with motorbikes on the back no. While he's learning his life. No. My niece drove from Warwick to here with her father beside her. My father's a, my brother's a cop. So six foot, foot three burly police officer. She drove from Warwick to here with the trailer on the back empty in the four wheel drive. And then she drove from here back to Warwick with three motorbikes loaded on the back of that trailer. Wow. Cause that's what he came to get. He's um, he started a new business out there actually teaching riding. Yep. And um, so, she, and I watched them drive off and I thought, <laughs> Only in our family, really, <laughs> would we? I mean, we were driving. I drove. I learned to drive in a manual, column shift, Valiant Ute in the oh, front yeah. paddock of our property, yes. paddock basher. 
yeah. and smashed the car into the back of the boat at the age of 14 because oh. that's what you do when you live on a farm. Yes, I do yeah. know. Yeah, I do know some farm people. <laughs> that's what they, <laughs> what they do. Ooh, and dirt roads. Oh, goodness gracious me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I so. learned not to grab the uh, the driver's steering wheel when I thought that she was didn't have um, didn't have uh, control of that, and how we ended up in the fence. Yeah, you don't do that either. No, you don't. <laughs> you know, actually, um, sometimes parents beside you, like my father, was a an instructor for other people, but when it came to us in the car together, that's when I ended up paying another instructor because that was a totally different story. Mm. So, and it wasn't in the instructor's car; it was in one of our cars. Mm. But, um, yeah, I ended up going and, you know, I drove to work. He's, he's naughty. I had my L's. In Queensland, you didn't have to put your L plates on the car back then. I, one morning, he got off work first thing in the morning and was asleep when I had to go to work. So I just jumped in his car and drove to work. There was no L plate. I just thought, drive confidently and no one will notice. <laughs> and they didn't. My boss turns up. She parks behind me. She saw the car and she was like, I thought your father must have come here to work because you were sick or something. <laughs> <laughs> now, people, anyone listening to this, don't do this. Don't do fine. that. Yeah, no, don't do that at all. <laughs> but that just goes to show the mindset, you know. It's confidence mm. over that nervousness. Oh, I'm going to get caught. Police are going to see me, da 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 And, uh, you know, I've actually always thought if you could get into the mind of a criminal, and I'm talking mafia-type criminal, bikey gang, whatever, into the mind of them and turn how they manipulate the system for bad into how to um, build your business – you'd have massive businesses because they live from a no fear position. Mm. Whereas we are worried about everything, mm. everything. Are we going to fail? Is this going to work? Da, 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 da. They're worried about, are they going to get caught by the cops? How long is it going to take to get out of that before the police arrive? How are they going to break in in the first place? What are they going to steal? And we, we worry about our business. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just a business. Yeah. Really, it's, it's money. Yes, it's hard to get. You know, you and I have both had to start again in life um, I've had to start again twice from marriages. Well, I only got married once. The second one was just a relationship. You know, that was 20 years of my life that I, I probably could have really done without it with. Yes, it's a lot of lessons. Yes, there's a lot to impart on other people. Um, 11 years single, I've learned how to be excessively independent, probably too independent now. And um, yeah, so it's all mindset though around with it. You know, I know that I've been kept single because of my mindset around having another partner. Yeah. So that's what's kept me single. It's not that I wanted to be single. I thought that I wanted someone and I'd say things and, and think things and in my mind I wanted someone, but I'd speak as though I didn't. So, you know, you can't have the two in conflict with each other. How yeah. you're thinking and how you're talking has to be in sync. Yep. So, and that's so true in business. Yeah. Uh, with a, your marketing message and going out to people, it's got to be in alignment and in sync with what you do do and in with your, your own mind and your own confidence as well as um, in the transactions, the, the, the transactions that go on with your customers and clients and stakeholders. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's very much around, it, it's, it's that real self self-leadership. To lead others, you've got to know how to lead yourself and you start yeah. inwards and then you go outwards. Um, and I actually was doing some other interviews um, earlier today and the, the saying act as if keeps coming up into my mind. You know, we, we do need to, to build our confidence and sometimes it's really hard if we don't know how or if we've never achieved it prior. So the act as if can help with that and the visualisation. So it's, it's role modelling or practising for ourselves first and foremost and then doing it. All yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, that's where that whole fake it till you make it comes from too, you know, yeah. fake, fake it till you make it. Yep. Actually, there's some work that I've been doing with Dr. Michael Beckworth and he says, um, when you're upset and angry at the world, why, why, why? yell it out, still do your why, but yell in the positive like the thing that you actually want is here. And so you're saying, yelling out, why have I got so much money? Why is this all going so well for me? Why is life so good? And you're doing, er say, everything in the opposite to what is the actual reality. He said, because you're putting out that vibration. Yeah. You know, the vibration you're putting out is what you're going to receive. You get what you focus on, good or bad. That's right. So you need to use all the good words. Yep. 
And you've really got to believe in those words. You've really yeah. got to you know, have it inside of you. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And um, do that work on yourself of being in the now and seeing what you want to be and, and stepping forward, physically stepping forward, which we can do a little practice like that, which is just standing there and then closing your eyes, being in the situation you are in now and feeling the situation you're in now yeah. and then taking that physical step forward still with your eyes closed into the light and then feeling and seeing where you want to be. Mm. Mm. And then turning yourself around and looking at where you came from and deciding whether that's where you want to be or where you want to be is where you just stepped to. Mm. I mean, most of the time you're going to decide you don't want to go back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful stuff. The, that's lovely. So you, so people could do that as a visualization. You're saying absolutely, yep. That visualization. Physically stand up and then actually do the step forward. So keeping their eyes shut. Yep. So standing up, keeping their eyes shut. Yep. Taking a nice deep breath too. Center yourself. Feeling where you are now. Feeling that as a physiology in your body. Feeling it in your heart and your stomach and your whole body. Where you are right now. Mm. And when you're ready taking that step forward into the light mm -hmm. and seeing yourself where you want to be, your ultimate outcome. Now feel it right throughout your body. Feel how that feels right throughout your body. Now cross your arms or something like that so that your hands are touching your body, touch your legs, touch yourself somewhere where you anchor that feeling in your body. So if really feel it, really see it, really feel it. You can smell it, you can taste it. You know what the smell of the room's like. You can hear the sounds of the room. If there's other people in the room, cheering, clapping, standing ovation for your achievements. And then turn around and look at where you came from. Hmm. And when you're ready, open your eyes again. Well, everything's bright. <laughs> 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 well, gee, I automatically, you know, I was really trying to visualize and doing all of that. And, and I just felt just so happy. Just yes. So happy. And stay in that moment. Actually, today I was on uh, line and saw some, oh, a lot of adults are acting like children right now, which is really funny. I mean, they may as well be chucking a tanty going, I'm bored. <laughs> and um, all of a sudden I put the phone down and I, and I clicked my fingers and I got this ounce of inspiration. I was like, yes. And I, the clicking of my fingers, I was like, huh, let's try clicking two fingers. And then I was like, yes, 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 yes. And just building on it. And I was like, wow, feel the change in your body. Just doing that simple action of yes, yes. So then I jumped on the, um, the thing I call the Fat Blaster 2000, that shaker platform in the corner, where I balance myself and look and think about things. So I thought I've got to change my mindset at the moment because there's so much negativity online. Jumped on there for 10 minutes and, I, and the 10 minutes finished, the cat was on there with me. And then I, you know, did another 10 minutes because normally I do do that because your, your mind goes into such a space in that first 10 that you want to stay there for the second. Meanwhile, you're actually multitasking because you're shaking it off, turning the button, the abs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Two things at once, building your quads. It's another fake it till you make it. Build your quads up and then everyone thinks you're doing these marvellous workouts. And you're like, yes, I am. <laughs> so, yeah, only using the good words is anti-negative equals positive. So if you're going to keep everything in the positive, keep it in the positive. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, mindset isn't just about rainbows and lollipops. Mindset mm. is about being in the the good of things seeing the good of things there is negativity look at the negativity that we're going through right now mm. but look at us sitting here listening talking about how we can change that into a positive how can we use this time how can we you know there's things that you can be doing like cleaning out your wardrobes and you know if you're a sewer revamping some <laughs> of your clothes um 
if you're bored with your environment, which I, I was actually thinking about the people that are bored in their own home, this is your home environment. And if you're finding it boring and wanting to escape, that's something to really have a look at. Yeah, that's right. Sh but shift your furniture. Shift your furniture around. Shift a few things around in the house. Open different curtains to what you would normally do. Turn lamps on instead of lights. Do light some candles. Do th different things to what you would normally do on a normal day to put those fairy lights up. You know, it's Easter weekend, really. I mean, I know that the people will be listening to this way after, but there's no reason why people couldn't be putting fairy lights up for Easter. Mm. You know, yeah. things, there's, there's a book by um, Vishen Lakiani called The Code of Extoria, Extraordinary Mind. And he talks about the rules, which are actually the BS, not the belief system, but the other BS rules. Okay. And he says, we follow so many rules that we don't really need to follow. Like we're adults. We're old enough to make our own decision. We don't need the government to tell us that we have to be locked in. Lock yourself in. Mm. You know, stop jumping up and down about it and having the little tanty like little kids. And make your own decisions. You know, those people whinging today because they're not allowed to get in the car. Go for a walk. Yeah. Go and get in the garden. Do yeah. something else. Yeah. Get in the car. <laughs> Go and get in the car. If that's what you want to do, if you want to be defiant, get in the car. You know? <laughs> Thankfully, we don't live in a communist country, but we, you know, in actual fact, at the moment, we can um, get and appreciate what other people in other countries have to go through. Yeah, that's you right. Know, at, as a normal daily life. Yeah. So when we get to the other end of this, we're going to appreciate our free countries very much. Yes. Yeah, we're still very, very spoiled. We're still very, you know, got a lot of wonderful things um, around us. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't understand really why people focus in on the negative and see it as a negative. I always like to see, look, you know, there's, there's two ways to, to view something and to try to find the joy in it, try to find the silver lining in it. Um, and I'm often saying, you know, uh, are you a victim or victor? And yes. sure, you know, there's times where we can sort of go, oh, I just want to play victim just for a bit. Mm, but we can do that. Have your tanty, then get up. Yeah, but move on. No one's really going to be your advocate. No one's really going to care other than you. And people mm. don't want to care for people who are not caring for themselves. And, what is, and God says, God helps those who help themselves. Yeah. And my mum always says, and God help you if you're caught helping yourself. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> a lot of stories coming jumping to mind there but i'm just mm. <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's it's a form of of um self-leadership again but it's also showing people that hey i respect me enough that i want you to respect me too you know people mm. it, it's um it's about that mirror imaging really so you know, let's look at, well, what can we do? And we can do so much. And some, some people do find that very, very confusing, though. You know, well, what should I co focus on first and foremost? Because there is so much that I could be focusing on. Um, yeah, so in and around that, you know, you've got the prioritisation and you've got the wants versus the needs. <laughs> yeah. I know that I need to clean out my... Um, walk in row, but do I want to do it today? Yes. Do I want to clean out? You know what's a really good way to do that? And I've had a bag in the bottom of the wardrobe um, because I, to get in the top, I need to stand on a, an old um, uh, dressing table stool. So mm -hmm. I threw this bag, it's a big plastic bag in the bottom. And I thought as I'm up the top and I happen to find something and I think, why is that still here? Chuck it down the bottom and then yeah. chuck it into the bag. So you're not actually making a chore out of it. Uh, but then, you know, just doing it as you go, because yes. there's a lot of things that, especially in Queensland, because we can miss out on having a winter all together sometimes. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we just, it was Wednesday last year. wonder what day it's going to be this year. But <laughs> I've got a cupboard, the whole top of my wardrobe is full of jumpers that never see the light of day. But yeah. I don't part with them. I do go to Canberra sometimes, you know, mum knitted a lot of them. So it's not, you can't really chuck them out because of that. And some of them have hardly been worn. So you feel like, well, I can't chuck them out because of that. And, you know, and who yeah. knows where I might move out west a little bit. Actually, my brother's 160 kilometres west from here and he's already got beanie and a fire roaring. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, it turned cold out there real fast. Mm. So 
who knows where time will take you in the next couple of years with my project I was intending to build it out past Warwick so knowing that it's cold that I might need one of those jumpers yeah. so the top of my cupboard though doesn't get looked at very often so when I climb up to you know get something light and this you know because I'm going to go in the garden or I'm going to do this and I don't want to wear my good stuff you find other things you just chuck them out mm. yeah or make a date with yourself this Saturday this is what I'm going to do yeah. I'm just going to do this project. This is what I want to achieve. Even if like upstairs at the moment in my place, all these clothes that came out from underneath the stairs, I've taken all the boxes upstairs so that nobody can see them downstairs anymore. So it's just geography. But I figure if they're in my way, they're more likely to get done. Whereas if they're down here piled on top of each other, I'll just keep walking past them and you get banner blindness. You yeah. just don't see them anymore. True. So true. So, yeah. so true. Yeah. But if I've... I have to trip over them, I've often done that sometimes with my some of my to-do lists and if there's this one thing that I've been procrastinating on, sometimes I'll just write that one thing on a piece of paper and I'll put it right in the doorway so I have to trip over and it'll be annoying to me so then I get annoyed with myself so then I must do it. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. funny the, the games that we play with ourselves. That is exactly right. There is a book actually, Eat the Big Frog First, which I like to relate that to chocolate or green and red lolly frogs okay. <laughs> gonna eat a frog you may as well taste good <laughs> but um I think that's quite going with that it's theory though so not, basically do the worst thing first that's just, right that's right but it also you know but the whole concept of eating a frog yeah. um but that's exactly right it's eat you know do the do the hardest thing first get it out of the way and then move on to the rest of the, the to-do list after that. Yeah. Otherwise, just keep writing it from today's to-do list onto tomorrow's to-do list yeah. and it keeps just moving. I've had people say to me, yeah, but Sonia, what if you've got a whole lot of frogs? And I go, okay, well, prioritisation now. So you look for the toads, they're worse than the frogs. So you look for the toads and the fattest ones and then you work your way through your toads. Then you work yeah. your way through your frogs and then after that, anything's chocolate. <laughs> yeah, anything, anything's good. That's anything. right. You know what? I... Um, it doesn't matter what's going on in life, you, you can always make a chocolate cake. Yes, I like that. You can always yeah. make a chocolate cake. Well, doesn't matter. I'm use that as a, um, as a, as a quote. I'm, I'm going to put that on my website. <laughs> I, I did. That. I did actually Facebook that with a recipe so that people could go to the recipe for the chocolate cake. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> Um, yeah, don't get caught on social media at the moment because it is quite negative out there with people starting to show different colours. People aren't being in their true nature right now. You know, I've seen posts from people that I would never have thought of in a million years would be writing the way they're writing. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, wow, you're a business person and you're really showing some negativity right mm -hmm. now. And if I was looking to work with someone, that wouldn't be what I'd be wanting to work with. Yeah. So just remember, you're always on show. Always. Yeah. And be careful. You know, my, uh, my mum always taught me that, you know, don't ever put anything in writing because, you know, yes. they're forever. So, you know, people, unfortunately, with some of these social media things, that they're just airing way too much dirty laundry and just, mm. you know, it's always going to be there. Someone can always find it then. So, but on the same token, you know, really, you should be just cleaning up your thoughts full stop, you know. Yeah. And move yeah. towards the positive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so um, some things to do. Journaling. Right now, you're going through things that are different to normal and the best thing you can do is get them out of your head and onto paper so that they're not going to go around and around and around. So journal, diary. It doesn't matter if you write for half a day and it... it Put some other notepaper beside what you're going to journal in because you might come up with half a dozen ideas about other things. You know, you can springboard off um, springboard off that that you've just written is going to come out with, you know what, from that I can do this, this and this. What about other people that are going through this right now? How can I help them? Mm. You know, and just continually thinking about, because you, you're going to be thinking about your business and moving forward and what's going to happen. A lot of business owners can get into their premises right now. So maybe you'll still use your premise instead of going to use your home as your home office. And maybe because the kids are home from school, you're stuck home too for that reason. Well, teach your kids a bit about your business. Teach them some business skills. Yeah. You know, teach them, take them to the office with you and show them how your office works. Yep. You know, it's good for them to learn these things because really at school, they're only getting a, 
lucky if they're getting a three hour education. So, you know, teaching them stuff about business and finance and um, what, a what a credit card does. It's a line of credit. It can be used for evil. It can be used for good. Yep. You know? It's not a loan. It's not a give out. <laughs> well, it is a loan because it is the bank's money, but you don't well, loan it to other people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, what I, what I, I suppose, because I'm thinking of the percentage rates being different. Oh, yes. A loan to yes. a credit card. And yeah, my, my young one always thought that these credit cards was it's just instant money. Well, no, I'm actually borrowing. Uh, you know, when yes. I use my credit card, I'm borrowing and I'm paying the banks um, Fat interest you know, big interest on it so mm. it's not like extra money sitting there for me just to use <laughs> no. well that's the thing you know interest rates are the lowest they've ever <laughs> this is stuff from yesterday interest <laughs> rates are the lowest they've ever been so it's a good time to really have a look at what you're paying on stuff you know yes. you've got time pull out all your statements and have a look at what your rates are and start to formulate a plan of what you're going to do with some of these debts going forward. Cause right now it might be hard to, you know, I see a lot of brokers and whatnot talking about refinancing, but I don't know how, how they're really going to get them through. Cause yes, they will look, be looking at your past income, but at the moment we know that the future is unsure. So the bank is going to take that into consideration. Mm. So, you know, they're not going to just take the past as advisement. Um, mortgage, maybe, because if it's just the mortgage, because you've been paying it anyway and your capacity to pay it going forward is going to stay the same mm. and it'll be less. But, mm. um, yeah, it'll be, I'd be interested to speak to a couple of brokers and see how they're finding it in the refinance market, to be honest, because mm. that uh, I find intriguing. Because this is a situation that we've never had before. There's no rule book in this. There's no procedures. There's no manual. You know, it's all, you write your own. Yeah, you really write your right. own. The that's only right. thing is that we've been told by the government to do as we're told and it's a really good idea to stop and do it. Yeah. Yeah. However, we can do business online. Hello. That is exactly <laughs> right. Like, look what we're doing the right 2000 now. 2000 millennial came around and it was supposed to have happened this way, but it's sort of a lot of people didn't quite get on board with it enough initially. Um, but then, you know, with some other people's industries and um, their job roles, it has morphed as a necessity. And it's, mm. you know, there's a lot of people doing it that's go, well, this is no different for me. <laughs> But it's yeah. just looking at, well, what is the product and service that we're providing? Yes, exactly. Exactly. And it's a good time to stop, breathe and read. So yeah. reading your PMA books, your um, positive mental attitude, your business books, your self-help books, you know, all those books that are self-help, not shelf help. Yeah. Go to your bookshelf, get them off, dust them off and give them a good read. You know, there's so much and make sure you've got pen and paper beside you once again, because there's so much stuff that comes out of it. You know, even the Bible's for inspiration, not decoration. It's got so much stuff in it to, to use in life. Like um, I'm Buddhist. So there's so much stuff from that. It's been the best self-help course and, and cheapest I have done in my whole entire life. Yeah. So, you know, and I mean, I've got NBN in my house, which means not before nine. So the phone doesn't come on. I don't, I sometimes look at it just, I've got a feeling that, you know, someone might be reaching out for something. So I'll have a look so I'm aware of it. Otherwise it'll play in my mind because that's my meditation time and my reading time. Yeah. And nobody disturbs it. I don't let the phone cut in because otherwise I feel like I didn't start my day right. Yeah. So I just sit up in bed. I don't even get out. I sit up and meditate from bed. Mm -hmm. And that's how I start my day. So meditation is going to reduce your amygdala, which is actually a walnut size part of your brain that increases with stress. Now, this is your fight and flight response is your amygdala. So when the amygdala is stressed, your flight response is instant. You're going to have no think gap. You're going to either run or attack. And it's going to be without thought in between. It's, it's instant reaction. Now, the more you meditate, the smaller that amygdala is, which in my mind is like, okay, does that mean it takes pressure off the brain as well because it's got smaller? Um, might have to ask somebody about that. But um, it means that your reaction to things is going to be more thought. You're going to pause. You're going to have more 
positive outlook on things. You're going to have a bigger time frame to look at the other side, the bigger picture, and that type of stuff from meditation. It also changes your DNA. So if there's hereditary illness in your family, you can change your DNA so that you don't get that hereditary illness. Wow. And it also lengthens your ta telomeres, which is part of your DNA strand. Now, the, the ends of those telomeres decide how long you're going to live. So by lengthening them through meditation, you will live longer. So everyone's looking for the fountain of youth. There it is. Meditate. Wow. It's right I there. I didn't realise that the amygdala actually reduces in size. You're saying that it phys physically reduces in physically size. Physically reduces in size. Wow. Because yeah. the amygdala also releases um, chemicals into our um, body as far as um, the cortisol, doesn't cortisol, it? Cortisol, yeah. Yeah, which mm. is from stress, which then co when creates fat in your body. Cortisol creates fat. It creates all these other um, chemical changes in your body and your physiology that are all negative. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, cortisol is not a, not a good thing to have no, floating around. Not. And then blood on pressure its own. and all sorts of things. Yeah, absolutely. Harden, hardening of arteries and all yep, sorts. Yeah, hypertension and, and mm. whatnot. Yeah. So we meditate a whole lot more. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And be grateful too. So write, get yourself a grateful diary, write down what you're grateful for and write it down every day. Cause it's sometimes writing down, you know, grateful for the fact that we live in a free country most of the time, yeah. right? This minute we're a little bit restricted, but that's just today. So look at the other things. I've got a roof over my head. I've got food in the fridge. My electricity's on. I have warm, dry bed. I have a garden to go out in. I have my three cats. I have vehicles parked out the front if I want to go anywhere. I have money in the bank. Might not be millions, but there's still money there. I've got contents in my house. I've got fresh running water, you know, fresh air, trees over the fence that fill up with beautiful birds. A nice bed. Yeah, you know, clean bathroom. When we were young, we didn't have it in our house. Well, that's it. The toilet used to be outside. You know, you went into the toilet with the snakes and the spiders and, you know, toads and rats and anything else that wanted to be in there with you. Yes. You know, that's where the old red back on the toilet seat comes from. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and those uh, drop, what do they call them? The, the, the drop holes? Or the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh, the Grateful Journal. Uh, yeah, I'd completely forgotten about that and I had stopped that, so I'm going to get back to that. Um, yeah. I used to do that with my mum. We would ring each other and say, right, what were the three things you've been grateful for this week, mum? What mm. did you write down in your Grateful Journal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Her for when she was going through a bit of depression. Um, yeah, so and, and to get perspective. Yeah, yeah, I published a journal back in 2016, which was, uh, it's called Journal of Life, Your Life, which is about you writing. It's journal space, grateful space and meditation space so that you can write about your meditations as well. Mm. Write if your meditation was good or bad or otherwise. If you couldn't settle your mind down in your, medita in your metal meditation, um, you know, I mean, meditation actually increases your ability to heal four times faster than with medication alone. So, you know, there was a time last year, I was reading the Medicine Master Sutra at the same time, and I meditate every day, and my thyroid, we were trying to get back down for three years, all of a sudden dropped significantly overnight into space, into the right space. And we, I've been on anti-thyroid medication three lots a day for three years. Mm -hmm. And the next minute with meditation, straight in. Wow. So it, it's a, it's, I can tell it's made a massive difference in my life. My coping ability with my mum being here majority of the time for the last four years, you know, I noticed this last time it was even easier for me to deal with it than times before, um, to be more compassionate than times before, you know, cause it has been a big, um, inconvenience <laughs> anyone knows that you you don't want your mum. you've grown up you don't want your mum in your house 24 7 after you've left home and gotten and gotten gone and gotten your own life <laughs> yes 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 
been there, done that a bit, both parents. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, well, well, I don't have my father in my life and we'll get on to that another time. Um, so, yeah, mum remarried when I was married, actually. She met a man and remarried. So that her children, my step family and I didn't grow up together. So it's all very different in that yeah, space. It would be. Yeah. yeah. But watch your words. Um, you know, a long time ago, it takes a long time to change your language. So start with um, picking up on things, maybe a swear word that you want to take out of your vocabulary. Every time you hear yourself say it, you think you cringe yourself even. You know, I don't um, poke my tongue out or stick my finger up at people. There's um, words that I just don't use. I never wish ill harm. I never wish, um, I wish you were dead or any of those kind of things. I never say those kind of things to anybody or about anybody because I would never, if something happened, I'd never want that back on me. And it came actually, I realized this back in the nineties when I was married and I said all these horrible things by myself in my own home. And then my husband came back and repeated everyone had happened. I obviously said it about him, repeated every one of them. And I was like, <clears throat> Oh my gosh. I have to change my language. Yeah. The other side is listening. Yeah. So, you know, from that moment on, I started to change the words that I use and that's where the whole mindfulness comes in, you know, and it's starting to learn from those small bits and slowly filtering it through into your whole life, catching yourself and going, you know what? I want to change that. That's not how I want to be seen. Yep. Yep. You know, stuff yeah, comes from people, They don't realise that they're actually saying things like that. It could get yeah. into a habit and not realise how much it's been coming across to other people, or the amount of times they're using negativity, how it's yeah. being, they're, they're, how they are being perceived by other people. And certainly, <coughs> excuse me, it's affecting our subconscious mind as well as our conscious mind. And it's going to affect our future. And if it's and not health. alignment with our future, then then stop. You know, it is yeah. a waste of energy. Yeah, use all the good words. Just use all the good words. It's like in the holiday that you know that movie, the holiday with um, Cameron Diaz in it. And when yeah. um, when um, Jack Black's making that, it's not his character name, but uh, he's making the song for um, I can't think of a name. But um, he says to her, "I've only used all the good notes." And I thought, isn't that lovely? Well, yeah. it's just, just a lovely thing to say. Yeah. I mean, all the notes are the same. Well, they're not the same, the same, but you know what I mean. All the yeah. notes are equal. Yeah. And, um, and he, but he says to her, I've only used all the good notes. I thought, oh, what a beautiful thing to say to a yeah, person. It is. You know, because you're worth all the good notes and you're worth all the good words. Yeah. That's, and it's treating yourself too. Pick up on the things that you say in your mind, like, oh, you stupid fool and stupid idiot and yeah. all these kind of things, because subconsciously you start to believe those things. Yes. So um, I remember someone hearing me one day call, um, saying, are oh, you twit? And she picked me up thinking that I was calling someone else a twit. And I was actually saying it to myself and she yeah. said something to me and I said, yes, I shouldn't be so hard on myself, should I? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Because That's you're not good. a twit, you're not a fool, you're not an idiot, you know. And so stop saying it. Stop yeah. saying it. Stop calling yourself these things. Absolutely. There was a saying that went around when people started to realise what the word twit meant that people would say, no, you're not a pregnant goldfish. Yes, that's exactly right. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So basically turning your life around to the positive is not just about, as I said, unicorns, lollipops and rainbows. It's about just the way you speak, the way you speak, the words you use, you know, um, the derogatory way you say things to people like I had a reading once, this is a psychic reading and somebody in my family came through, they're probably going to, oh, one day I'm going to run into them and they're going to really have a few words to say about this. But they said, get off your ass. What a bo most useless thing to say to a person. Really? Did I really go to a psychic to be told that? I wanted <laughs> direction. Stand up. Wasn't it? <clears throat> You know, like I was, I was looking for something more. Get yeah. off your ass is, is useless. And really it places you on a pedestal over somebody else. It's like you're, you know what to do. You're an authority. Why don't you know how to do it? You know, and it's, that's, um, we don't do that. A sign of a really strong ego, someone that's got a really, really big ego is a sign of a mental health issue. Yes. So we don't want over, overdone egos. We want to keep it real. Keep it calm, feet per firmly on the ground. If you find that you get a bit flighty and whatnot, take your shoes off. Mm. Walk in bare feet because that will keep you grounded. 
keeping it real. Mm. Yeah. Look at also at the moment, um, what's, in, what's important? You know, with, your, with the money and the direction that you were taking things in and you're taking your business and your household in, what's really important at the end of the day? What do you use? You know, like we've got, my house is full of trinkets. So I've been a collector. So there's a lot of antique furniture, a lot of, well, you can see in the back here, a lot of books, um, a lot of antique china. And lately I've started looking at it, which is probably from spending my time meditating with nunks, monks and nuns on Sundays is looking at it all and going, what's it all for? Yeah. What's its purpose? Mm. You know, what's the purpose of this? What's the purpose of that extra table standing in the corner? What's the purpose of the wine rack when I don't drink? What's mm. the purpose of all those extra containers in my cupboards taking up so much room? Yeah. What's the purpose of using up half of my cupboard under the sink with plastic bags that we don't get anymore for free at the supermarket? Well, see, I'm anti-plastic, so yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad we don't do that anymore. So good. So good. It is. We it still is. need to, to come a lot further on that, um, you know, as a society. and Packaging. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. The choice with that comes at the shelf, you know. Like, there used to be ads about buying stuff that was the least packaged. And you think about sometimes you'll buy something in a box and it's got plastic around the outside of the box and you'll open the box and there's plastic around the item inside it. That's two lots of plastic in a cardboard yeah. box. Yeah. Yeah. There used to be a joke. Um, a comedian did this forever ago where they went to the store and they bought themselves a waste paper basket and the guy put it in a paper bag. And when they got home, they took it out of the paper bag, screwed up the paper bag and put it in the waste paper basket. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, and we do silly stuff all the time. Yes, exactly. So, you know, we can often, we, we really need to, that's getting back to your, your first part. We need to audit ourselves. We need to audit yes. our business. We need to audit ourselves. We need to audit our mind. We need to order, yeah. audit our uh, thought perspectives. Um, yeah. And even really the quality of what we're thinking about. You know, we, yes. we're looking at our words. We also need to look at well, our thought processes. What is the quality? And where are we wasting time that we shouldn't really worry about? Yeah, yes. Back to your phone again. You know, everyone's got their heads in the phone. That is the, they used to say TV is the biggest waste of time. I think phone has surpassed oh, that. Oh, yes. You know, it's a, it is a time waster. The amount of time, actually, I think someone said you can get an app that tells you how much time you've spent on the phone. <laughs> you probably, some people would probably be very surprised. Yeah, yes, yeah. And That's put right. that extra time into your business or into yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Prior to all the mobile phones, you know, we use time up really quite well. So, yeah. Yeah, you entertained yourself. Yeah. That's probably where the term board games came from. It wasn't because they were played on a board. It's probably because people were bored. <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah. really before kids ever said, I'm bored, yeah. is when we were outside having things to do, game, yeah. playing games, riding bikes, yeah. roller skating. Who roller skates anymore? Yeah. You know, climbing equipment, climbing trees. Yep. doing all that kind of stuff, digging in the dirt, making mud pies. Yep. I never, I never was bored growing up, but um, I've always said to my kids, don't ever come to me and say you're bored because one, you know, there'll, there'll be cleaning jobs yep. um, or two, yeah, go and do some voluntary work. Like yep. I never, yep. you know, boredom is a luxury. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's your, it's your thought um, and mindset and really to be on, on this planet you know, we're given the present because it is a present. We're given life because it is a present. You know, we should be doing something mm. with it. And, you know, yep, I'm sure that, that's, my, that's my thoughts, you know. It's mm. about paying it forward because otherwise, you know, it's what is the purpose to life? But, um, yeah. you know, it helps, uh, it helps create positivity for yourself. It creates positive to positivity with others. When people get angry and frustrated, I always say, well, you know, you can create your surroundings so yeah. you try first. Don't wait for others to step up. You do it first. That's because right. Because like attracts like. And Always look at yourself. And if it's not, well, then get out of that boat and get on another boat. Then maybe you're in the wrong boat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't wish and, to um, about your job. Well, that's it. And <laughs> don't get angry. better or get out of that boat. Don't get angry at ignorance. Yes. Yeah, that's something that um, Venerable Master Hua says. Don't get angry at ignorance. And look at what Michael Jackson said. Start with the man in the mirror. Yeah. Yep. And who's he talking about? The self. Yep. 
you know, start with the self, change yourself and then the others will change around you. They'll see That's you right. step up, they'll step up too. That's right. And then over time you'll start to shed people that you don't need in your life anymore. And, you know, people say you can't get rid of your family. Yes, you can. Mm. I've had nothing to do with my father for over 20 years. There's other relatives I've got I, in my, in my life, I have family and I have relatives. So there's people that I never have anything to do with. Mm. There's a little bit of Facebook communication, but they live, I'm at exit 57 and they're at exit 30. So that's 27 kilometers difference between us. I have not seen them in the 11 years that I've been living here. Wow. Now mum drives through where they live to get to the nursing home. She, she can't get, she can't sway off those spaces. And my auntie says, I'll let her know, you know, tell her I said, hi, why don't you ring her for starters and tell her yourself and ask her in, hmm. yep. ask her in or come and see her. Hmm. She's been coming for four years now. Hmm. So it's really shows a timeline. Yes, you can get rid of family, you know, especially if they're dragging you down. Yeah. Sometimes it's a bit harder when they're immediate, but do yeah. the, don't do call them. Let them call you. Then you only have to put up with them, you know, a part of the time. If they whinge about it, I'm busy. Eventually they'll get the, they'll get the picture. Mm. But you've got to look after your own mental health. And sometimes the biggest drawdown on mental health can come from immediate family. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's also that there's a saying there that um, don't let – people be your dream stealers yeah so, so if you've got a dream and with your business and where you want to get to who's to say it's wrong who's to say yeah. it's, you know just keep going it's not gonna work yeah <clears throat> just keep going keep trying and um i think did we speak about it um a little while ago that um you know um oh no it was someone else who mentioned to me you know with the the man who with the dyson vacuum cleaners it was uh, something like 3,000 times by the time he actually attempts to actually get it right. So if he had just, you know, that's a lot of times to attempt to keep trying, keep trying for this yeah. dream. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying until eventually you get it right. Well, look at the but light bulb. There's a lot of people in the light bulb. There's a lot of people that wouldn't try that many times. Yeah, exactly. I mean, realistically, if you bake a cake and it flops, are you going to stop baking or are you going to try another cake? Yeah. try another recipe you're going to do it again of course you're going to do it again because yeah. you know even though it flopped it still tasted good just because it wasn't um master chef you know quality yeah. yes who cares it still tastes like chocolate cake <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit like yeah it still goes down the same way and still gets mushed up in your stomach so i don't get exactly what it right like. <laughs> that's exactly right it tastes good um and yeah so with right now with people um having to pivot in their business or looking at having to put their current business model on hold and either do a different model so therefore a different stream or completely different type of business right now is to take these sorts of different principles and put them into practice yeah Absolutely. Absolutely. And try those recipes, you know, talking about things to do to keep yourself, you know, try the recipes that you didn't get to try all that time. At the moment, it's hard to get the things on, light, on the shelves that um, mm. you would get normally. So look at trying a few different things that you wouldn't normally try. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Cook. Teach the kids to cook. <laughs> Teach yeah. the kids to cook. Yeah. Well, my, I've taught my kids actually Oh, excuse me. So we're talking in a very physical sense here with the recipes compared to the business and the, the recipes for business. But as far as the teaching kids to cook, yeah, I taught my kids to, to cook it from the age of nine upwards yep. um, and to help and to participate prior to that um, because it's a fundamental of life, mm. you know? So, um, you know, with business, you can have fundamentals in that too and, and different recipes for, for how you can, um meet supply and demand yeah uh, so you know it's the same sort of concepts really and who's to say yes. what's the right age to start cooking that's exactly right that's exactly right my um ex-sister-in-law is indian so they had her come to teach the class how to make um pories you know so they made the the flatbread yep you know, and that's my niece's primary school class that they went and did that with. She's in late high school now, so yep. it's quite a while ago. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that, you know, thinking about that with business, we're in a multicultural country. How many people in your, your office, if you had a multicultural day where people brought a, a dish from their country or that something that they cook at home all the time that they've been taught and brought it to um, work and everybody tried, you know, Friday, everyone's going to bring a meal or every different Friday, someone is going to bring something different. Yeah. And um, and stop half, you know, stop and have that that's lunch that day, or yeah. you know, and playing music, you know, playing music now. Obviously, if you're stuck at home, to so get you out of your funk, but playing music at work because it's nice when people have got that bit of sound. You don't work in a library unless you'd work in a library, <laughs> but you don't work in a library, so they have music playing because it's you know you want people to feel lighthearted. It, you know, if they're going to sing at their desk, going to enjoy their work, and that kind of thing is going to be um, good for their mental health too absolutely absolutely yeah. so you know when well, you're looking at them really the the and i do very much so believe it in it the the multi-sensory so the music smell um yeah. i like aromatherapy yeah um so sound taste by having some fresh fruits instead of the just straightforward high sugar stuff yeah um and different teas and stuff like that herbal teas so you're still getting the taste involved, but you're also getting fluids. Yeah, or even infusion. lemon in water. Yep, I always had, and I was going to say infusion water. I always have lemon in my water. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, with the having a little breaks and rests, um, so you can have a mental rest and you can have a physical and mental rest, um, even if it's just a power nap. Do you know? And and I, yeah, all of this helps bring back in a very holistic way with helping with business. There was one particular lady, I'll, I'll share with you a quick little story. There was this one particular lady who I was doing some um, coaching with and she was um, like an executive and she was getting really, really stressed out. And she came in and I'd seen her over a couple of other days. And this one particular day that she came into this room with me and her eyes were very, very bloodshot. And I said, are you okay? And she said, I'm just really, really stressed. I said, your eyes are very bloodshot. Are you, you know, have you been upset? No. Have you been getting sleep? Well, not, you know, nothing majorly different. Okay. But I saw it in, in a physical manifestation, her anger at work and her, and her stress was in her bloodshot eyes. And I said, look, can I just try something with you and just do a bit of a, uh, a, a for a, a, give a bit of a trial around a bit of meditation. Um, and then, so you know roughly how to think and, and feel, because I think you need to, help your inner dialogue here because he, we, you know, we looked at lots of different ways to be able to help her with her business, but really she was in the wrong ship and I could see that. And I really wanted to try to, for her to start to see and um, that there's other pathways and she, she needs to move ship and that, um, and to build some extra skills on. I said, look, I'm just going to run you through. It's this, it's one of my favorite things. It's a three minutes mindfulness, but it's a breathing mindfulness. Mm. But while I did that for her for three minutes, I also got her to, and I talked her through it. So a little bit like that hypnotherapy and talked her through the feeling. And I said, and I'd really like you to just try and experiment with this at home about, you know, something that's going to work for you. So can we just do this for three minutes? And, um, we did that. And I saw her whole body change. She opened her eyes and her eyes were instantly white, no bloodshot at all. And her face glowed with color. Whereas, and then I yeah. realized prior that she was solo. And yeah. just in three minutes, the, the, her eyes completely that gone. Yeah. And I went, and she goes, that's fantastic. I feel so ramped up. And I said, look, it's only three minutes. No, no. No, I feel fantastic. I went, wow, well, I can see physically you completely recharged your batteries. Like yeah. complete recharge, not just 10% or 5%, a complete recharge in just three minutes. And I went, That's I've right. never seen such a huge change around change. in yeah. just three minutes. I said, well, obviously that works for you. You better do that at home. <laughs> yeah, some Vipassana um, meditation and just breathing, focusing on the breath. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. You know, the biggest country of meditators, apart from India and, um, and you know, the Asian countries that it's part of their culture, mm. is actually America. 
Mm. They are massive meditators in America. Australia is getting on board, but not remotely as much. And I mean, if your team members just to clear their mind, because sometimes they get a little bit of overwhelm like, yep. and they just can't think, you know, that people are coming up to them asking them thousands of questions. Yep. How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do something? Where is this? Where is this person? Da 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 da. And they just get like, oh, I have to, I'm going to have to walk out in a second. If they just stop, close their eyes. But the one thing that you can really do is put your hands, your back of one hand in the, in the palm of the other and put your thumbs, the tip of your thumbs touching. So the back of Hold one on. hand. Back of one hand and the palm of the other. The yes. palm of the other. Yes. And then the th tip of your thumbs touching. Yes. Yep. And rest them in your lap. Yes. So that's a meridian where the whole top half of your body's created a meridian. Now around through your arms, back around through your hands, through your body. Yep. And if your tongue naturally touches the top of your mouth. Yep. Now your thumbs touching at the top is where your brain connectivity happens. So your memory and all of the um brain diseases that come with memory yeah instantly people know that you're meditating rather than having a sleep so yeah. they're going to leave you alone oh, it's yes. automatic that people will leave you alone and then if you close your eyes and just take those nice deep breath in hold and relax down through your neck and shoulders, your arms, your hands, your torso, buttocks, legs, shins, feet and toes. Now just checking on those shoulders, your scalp, your face, taking a nice deep breath in again, Holding and relaxing. And when you're ready, opening your eyes again. Oh, I, feel, I feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I was starting to get a bit of a headache prior too. So the headache... I did yesterday, actually. I, I think uh, I got a bit intense at the start of our call yesterday. So I did end up with quite the headache yesterday, yeah. And tired from that super moon. Whoa. <laughs> 24 hours of knocked out. Mm. Something else you can also do, like you wouldn't, if you, especially if you're working by yourself, is put the foot spa or the foot massager yeah. underneath your desk. Yes. Yeah. Like who uses their foot spa anymore? No one. But I heard someone talk about it the other day and I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. throw a couple of bath bombs in, a bit of Epsom salts. You know, another little tip around that too, my sister, one of my sister's um, teachers around aromatherapy and to do a, a little home foot spa, if you don't actually have one, get a bucket, put pe uh, marbles at the bottom and then you put in your other nice things and you just rub your feet around and it's the same sort oh, of thing. Yeah. And so then if you, yeah, if you, especially if you've got the aromatherapy oils, the essential oils in the bath and yeah, and it's very similar sort of effect. Mm. Yes, easy. definitely. I mean, that's what we used to use, wasn't it? Before the, the plug-in right. foot spas yeah. came, it was just a couple of buckets. Yep. Yeah, if you hurt your leg, in it went. <laughs> yep, in a bucket, yep. <laughs> and same with, you know, if you're going to chuck Epsom salts in it, um, which is magnesium, which when you're stressed, your body burns magnesium, but it yep. needs magnesium to fight the stress. So magnesium salts in your, which is Epsom salts, into yep. your um foot spa and when the water goes cold throw it out in the garden because that's magnesium for the earth yes so you know it's not d down the sink and wasted it goes out in your garden and yeah. if plants will love you yeah they will especially they will. if you've got a veggie garden and if you don't go and make a veggie garden now because you know veggies are scarce i've run out of tomatoes right now and i can't get those plants to come up fast enough but anyway it's funny because everyone's busting to get out and I'm like, oh, do I really need to go to the shop and get tomatoes? I'm sure I can do without them for a couple of days. <laughs> no, I say I've hardly gone out shopping. Uh, down here in um, the, the southern area of uh, Australia, it's a bit cold and a lot of people actually have uh, all the seeds in the supermarkets and all of that all gone. Um, yes. So people are trying to do some um, planting and my husband's going, the wrong time of year for the seeds that have gone. <laughs> like, uh -huh. I know how to yeah. anymore. I 
guess a lot of people will try planting inside too, you know, that um, starting them in trays. In, in fact, the mushroom trays um, from buying the mushrooms at Audi's has got a nice depth on it. So if you fill that with a bit of soil and put in some seeds in there, I, I save them. I'm bad for saving all the trays that come from stuff. I, um, I reuse those in the garden all the time, put them under a pot. So hold yeah. the water in the summer, you know, with the drought and everything yeah. in the winter, use them for, or, or not just the winter. I've, well, I've got a whole nursery, a, a hobby nursery outside. So um, I use those trays to grow from seed a lot, but I'm not very good at growing from seed in the veggie patch. So I do have parsley that's come up from seed but, and potatoes from seed, but that's coming from a t potato. But um, I just put some tomatoes in there before. We'll see if I can get anything out of them this time. <laughs> Do you know I've known people that have had um, businesses where their clients have come to um, their premise. So whether it's um, a shop or whether it's a, um, uh, uh, like a house and they're working in an area of their house and to have got those pots happening and the clients that, you know, if they've got clients or stakeholders that come and meet with them, they absolutely love it. It's a, it's a feature thing. And then you could actually cultivate some of those produce and then use it with a bit of a, do like a little entree. And it creates that point of differentiation that you then have as a relationship, um, a business relationship that you have with people. And it's something that, you know, what I've seen in the corporate worlds, you know, they, they miss that. But I have noticed that some of the other corporate offices that they're starting to do that. And the amount of, you, I've often noticed, the conversations are better. Uh, if you ever sit back and you watch and you listen, the conversations between, um, you know, the, the, the stakeholders are much more enriched and they have a better relationship than if it's uh, they're presenting their place in a very sterile um, situation. So, you know, this, this virtual Icebreaker. world. Yeah. Well, it just may, I, I think, you know, I think it's more than that. I think that it's, uh, it's bringing out that humanity side Mm. And it's working on people's subconscious minds. So in this virtual world, you know, it can be very sterile. But I've noticed the people that um, I've interviewed and talked with, if they've got a little bit more going on in their, their area that they're working with, that you can often get into really more enriched conversations and therefore some really great um, uh, projects can come about that too. So with, uh, and I just sort of wanted to bring that in as a tip for the people that are listening, really think about your areas of how it represents you as a human being, because we really are having to position ourselves as being a whole lot more human at the moment. Yeah, exactly. It's all about compassion and non-judgment at the moment. You know, you don't know what someone else is going through and, um, and you know, where, what their position is. Yeah. Just like people don't know yours. Yeah. You know? because we, start, we started to see um, pets come into the workplace. Yes. Um, which was really lovely. And so now I'm finding too with this whole um, meeting people and virtual meetings, you know, people are accepting that there's animals in the background. Whereas yeah. it used to be that, oh, no, that's very unprofessional. Well, you know, the world's changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We need to continue to... We can get a laugh out of it. We see that lady that had to race in and grab the three kids, the couple of kids out of the office when her husband was on reading yeah. the news. <laughs> Oh, that was oh. hilarious. Oh. Good honour. Yeah. Good lover. But he yeah. looks so angry and I'm like, oh, don't. I've seen other ones where people then have forgotten that they're online and have gone to the toilet while they're there. <laughs> like, yes. Oh. Yeah, forget that the microphone's attached and, you know, go off and... Well, there was that movie, wasn't it? That one with um, Steve... Steve McQueen? Uh, can't think. He's a comedian anyway, and he do it deliberately leaves with the microphone on and goes to the toilet and he's whistling and you can hear it all oh, happening. And, oh, gosh. Yeah, right. while he goes. And then the three squeezes at the end and oh. all that kind of stuff. So, Yuck. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you've got so, quite a few tips there on mindset and, and health. Yes. You have some other ones in there. Yeah, sleep. Ah. You know, get a good night's sleep. If you're waking up during the night, read or and you can't get back to sleep, read or meditate. Because meditation can actually replace sleep. But stay in bed, do your still rest, rest the body. 
because yeah. this is when your body regenerates, reheals, you know, and sometimes your body can say, right, you're down and out now. I've got you. I've, I need to fix this. You need to sleep. Mm. So that whole pushing past being tired, sometimes your body's actually saying, no, I need you to go to bed. Mm. I need you to sleep right now. You're going to be 10 times better and fresher in the morning than if you try and push through and keep doing this work now. It's just not going to be unproductive. Mm. So get a good sleep. Um, and massage. Do massage for yourself. You know, we're putting on moisturizer, moisturize. We can't massage our back, of course, or bodies and in the way we probably want to, unless you've got, you know, I mean, I've got a couple of recliners that massage and heat and a um, whole massage um, bed thing that you lay out and that kind of stuff, which is great. It does never replaces a real massage of course, but mm. massage your legs with some oils and some moisturizer, massage into your arms, use salt scrubs and things like that. Have the, your bath with your Epsom salts in it and do your scrubs and, you know, put a face mask on, color, put different colors in your hair that you probably wouldn't normally have. Men do the same thing. Put a color in your hair. If your wife's putting a color in your hair and she's got a bit left over, go and do yours too. Your hair's that short. You'll cut it out and, um, and <laughs> whatnot before anybody even sees it. And who cares if they do? Yeah. You know, who, who cares if you're twinning at the moment? Twinning with your wife's burgundy hair. <laughs> <laughs> and get some streaks put into your fringy bit. You know, do a different do. Do your hair a bit different. Get some clothes out of your cupboard and reorganize. You know, sometimes we the same outfit over and over and over. But if we put that skirt with that shirt and that shirt with that skirt and pants or something else, different accessories to what we normally use, change them all around. Yeah. Have a look at what things, good time to even change the way you do your makeup. Play around. Yeah. You know, do your makeup different, especially if you're good thing actually when you're home is to still sometimes do your makeup and get dressed properly for work. It does change your mindset and the way yeah. you do things, yeah. especially if you're starting to feel a bit down on yourself. Go and paint your face. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely helps me. You know, it, 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 yeah. And I, probably because, you know, most of my working life, I've really had to wear makeup in my type of job role. So that's why I, I do it you know, these days, because otherwise, you know, if I don't have it on, then I'm not really in my proper work mode in my mindset. Yep. So yep. it does make a difference. Some people don't need it so much and other people do. So it's, you know, working out what uh, you know works for you. It's really good to, to play around like though, as you're saying, and to try to change things because what you're doing is you're encouraging left brain, right brain work. Um, and you're encouraging um, your mind to be creative and to see things from a different perspective, um, which yeah. can then help you with problem solving and, and to um, create solutions for where you're at. No, that, you know, I made the comment paint your face because that's what I call putting on makeup, but paint your face, paint. If you're about to go into a Zoom meeting with all your staff and you're about to address them on something and everyone seems to be, you know, really tight, wound up, non-creative, paint a face painted cats or teddy bears or whatever you want on your face and, and what a shock they would get when all oh of a sudden goodness. your zoom meeting kicked in and your face is painted up and you're just what you know they're all <laughs> laughing what you got a big butterfly on your cheek or whatever and everyone's like laughing that what are you, what's up wrong with you all just pretend you don't even know what they're on about <laughs> or have a face mask on my sister-in-law put on a face mask and fell asleep a black mask fell asleep woke up, forgot that she'd done it, got, went around to the shops. <laughs> like he was in walking distance around the corner, walked around to the shop, <laughs> came home again. Her husband came home. They had a fight and he called her something nasty that related to her face oh, mask. Okay. Yes. And that's when it dawned on her that she had this face mask <laughs> on for how many hours and then she went backwards through all the things that she oh, had done. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, she I survived. I've never done that. Well, exactly. <laughs> I yes, did so. actually, I did have a black um, tar face mask and I put it on and then because I used to streak my hair but now too many greys, it has to all be done. Um, put the head cap on, you know, the cap where you pull your hair through? Yeah, yeah. And so I had both on at once and someone was saying, someone asked me for a selfie. A guy I was talking to asked me for a selfie. So I took one. He had no clue that I was pay did, doing this at the time. <laughs> and um, so I took one and sent it. Thought, you wanted it, you got it. <laughs> may as well get used to now that this happens in my home. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So and then funny. I kept the photo for anybody else that asked for one in the future so that I could send them that. <laughs> <laughs> send me a photo of yourself. Here you go. Pop that. 
<laughs> Great idea. Look, you've really brought us quite a few um, pieces of uh, and some <laughs> mindful thoughts about what we should do all around mindset <laughs> and health. Yeah, keep it light. Keep you know, keep the energy flowing. Keep it light. Keep all the time though, not just this time, all the time. You know, and eat well. Yeah, eat well. Throw your diets out the window. It's about good choices. Dieting is redundant. You know, empty calories, get rid of your fruit juices and your um, sodas, your, what, what do they call them? Soft drinks and, yeah. and all those kind of eat sugar, empty calories. They're calories that are useless. They don't do anything of value for you. Mm. Fruit juice is actually a meal. If you have a glass of fruit juice, you may as well count that as having a meal. It's got that many calories in it. Yep. So, you know, if you want to have a bit of flavored water, do it like cordial. Yep. You know, use your fruit juice like cordial. Yep. Especially at the moment that we're rationing, use your fruit juice like cordial. Yeah, you really are supposed to. That's good for your liver then. um, The fruit juices, the fruit juices and and even sometimes the vegetable juice is not so bad. The fruit juices, you know, you are supposed to water them down. It's like when you give them Mm. to children or kids, you're supposed to put water like cordial. Far too much um, sugar hit. And really you're missing out on the fiber and the other nutrients that the fruit does bring. So yeah. The, the actual um, the piece of fruit. Well, you've certainly brought us a lot of information today to think about and to do an audit on ourselves and to look at then, well, what can we do and improve? We are resetting our clocks in a way with um, our processes, with business and with our minds. Uh, so it's um, been lovely that... Um, You've, it's, you've not only brought this to fr- front of mind for everyone for today, but also over these four parts. You know, each of these um, four parts are uh, got so many fundamental principles and food for thought in them to help us in our businesses. So I really thank you for, for sharing your insight and your tips. No problem at all. I hope yeah. some people got some... Uh some pearls of wisdom out of there. And, um, and also I want to give everyone a gift as well. I'm going to give you a link to my um, uh, anxiety hypnosis. Okay. So that everybody that wants to use it can use it. I'd really love your feedback too. So it has been um, sitting in with the meditation subscription for a while now. So um, I'll give you that link to give everybody that. Yep. Beautiful. Lovely. And I'll pop it there on the webpage. So people can find that and uh, can go through to there and, um, you know, so that we've really had our eyes opened quite a lot about the benefits of um, hypnosis and um, mindfulness. So I think that's a really lovely gift that you're offering and uh, people will really benefit from it. Thank you. No problem at all. Well, um, we will sign off and and, um, thank you once again for bringing all of that um, to our attentions and uh, look forward to the the continuation of uh, your course with the eight webinars uh, for the power of money and the empowerment principles. Yeah, so you can find that at thepowerofmoney.online. Beautiful. Yeah. And again, I'll grab that URL and pop it on this website uh, on the page. Excellent. And um, really look forward to seeing what people's feedback is with all of these, um, with, the, with the, the, the free offering that you've got and also with your course and to see how it's been of uh, benefit for them. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm interested yeah. as well. Absolutely. I know because as we've said before, you pulled me out of retirement with this and was, it's amazing how, um, you know, we've been telling people to, to think about other things that they can offer and, you know, I'd, I'd really shelved this whole all you know all that years of experience and mm. it's actually surprised me at how motivated and excited I got about speaking about um this top these topics so yeah. well you've got a yeah. wealth of knowledge wealth of experience a wealth of skill set and we forget we do well, forget think, you know, because when we've been doing it for so long we take a lot of things for granted yeah that's right um not realizing that we are being of disservice to other people if we're shelving it and we're not really sharing. So yeah, yeah, that's you. selfish instead of selfish. That bit, you know, you got to share, share, gotta share. 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 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Donna, and thank um, you. Yeah, we'll see you another time. You will see you around. The, see you on the beaches of the world. Oh, sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.